Right now, at this time and age, women fighting tooth and nail for their dignity. Female aggression unleashed against sexual violators that used rape as a weapon of war on their sisters, daughters and mothers. Real life Wonder Women, defending their honor in a brutal genocidal war happening in the 21st century. Modern, classy, beautiful, but also dangerous. Here are the wives. To Gray, you've probably heard this name more frequently these days due to the events that are happening there right now as you watch this video. Don't worry if you haven't, I'll bring you up to date. But first, where is Tigray? Who are the Tigrayans and what's so special about them that you should sit and spend the next few minutes of your life watching this? Here's a very, very brief and quite amazing overview of their history and culture. Tigray is located in Eastern Africa and one of the 10 members constituting the Ethiopian Federation, very rich in history and tradition, and was once the center of the world during the Aksumite era. A civilization that lasted for centuries and was one of the four greatest empires at its peak. It had its own currency, own language and alphabet that still serves in Tigray and beyond to this day. Its capital, Aksum, still a very important tourist attraction, is considered the capital of Orthodox Christianity by many, who also believe it is hosting the Ark of the Covenant in Aksum Mariam Sion Church. Tigray is also a precious place for Islam, as it is the gateway in which Islam first stepped foot in Africa when the Aksumite King Nagasi gave protection to Muslims who were fleeing persecution. In fact, Islam was in Tigray before Mecca. Al Nagashi is the oldest mosque in Africa and amongst the oldest in the world, making Tigray one of the holiest places for Islam. Home to countless historic and religious sites and heritages, Tigray is one of the busiest tourist destinations. That is, until the war started on November 4, 2020. More on that later. Tigrayans make up 6% of the Ethiopian population, with more than 95% of them Orthodox Christians and the rest Muslims and Catholics. Tigrayans are a very religious and disciplined people, known for their hospitality and bright faces. <laughs> Most of Tigray is terrainous and extremely hard to cultivate. Despite this, the hardworking people of Tigray manage to maintain a sustainable production and even make profits. In 2017, Tigray Regional State was awarded for greening its dry land by World Future Council and United Nations Convention to Battle Desertification. Sesame, produced in Western Tigray, is the second largest export item from Ethiopia. The women's role in Tigray stands out in many sectors. Mothers, business leaders, politicians, fighters and more. They are amongst the strongest black women in the world and agreeably the most beautiful. This has a historical backing. Queen Sheba, an Aksumite empress, went to King Solomon. Stunned by her beauty and power, Solomon could not resist seducing her. They had a child, Menelik, who ruled over the empire after his mother. Tigrayan women involved in leadership and warfare are often given the name Waros.
This majestic hairstyle gives them more grace and class. Ashenda Festival, an outdoors public holiday that lasts a full month, dedicated for girls only. Women all around Tigray consider this the biggest event of the year. Dancing, music, fashion shows, food and drinks. It's a manifestation of freedom and respect women have in Tigray. Unfortunately, this is not the only face of Tigray. For centuries, due to its strategic location serving as a gateway to Africa, the region has been the center of battles and long wars. In the era when the campaign Scramble for Africa was declared by European colonial forces, the Tigrayan Emperor Johannes successfully defeated his enemies in battles multiple times for the length of his rule. Tigray hosted the famous Battle of Adwa, in which Abyssinians defeated colonial Italy led by generals like Tigray and Ras Alula. After colonial threats were out of the picture, Tigrayans had to fight internal oppression from the royalty. The first Wayani movement shook the throne of Emperor Haile Selassie in the early 20th century, but with the assistance of British air raids and a man-made famine, the revolution was suppressed. Decades later, a second Wayani movement against Derg, a communist military junta led by a well-known genocidal dictator, Colonel Mungustu. This war alone lasted for 17 years, with most battles fought in Tigray and Eritrea. Mungustu utilized Soviet weapons and another man-made famine like his predecessor. But this time, the Tigrayans succeeded. These brutal wars did a number on the Tigrayan population and ecosystem, not to mention its economy. The famine in 1984 is particularly well known around the world. There is no point in fighting if the people are finished. This is the saddest time in my life. I have seen many desperate times. But none of them is just spread out this one. Back then, the world showed solidarity with Tigray and helped the people with much needed life saving humanitarian assistance. Another genocidal war is taking place in Tigray, right now. Involved parties are Abiy's Prosperity Party leading ENDF, Isai Safawerki's despotic regime in Eritrea, Amhara Regional State and its Fano Militia, other regional troops, Fromajo's neighbouring Somali state, and as usual, a wealthy ally, supposedly UAE drones, and yet another man-made famine, all against the TPLF-led Tigray regional government and its regional forces and militia. Hmm, quite a match, huh? Here's a pretext leading to the first battle in Makala. Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF, is one of the rebel armies that fought against the brutal communist Derg regime in the 80s and 90s. They fought alongside the Eritrean People's Liberation Front, EPLF, and Eritrea later got its independence from Ethiopia. TPLF then formed a coalition with other parties to form the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, EPRDF. Years later, Isaias decided to invade Ethiopia, citing border disputes and faced a rather humiliating defeat and blamed the TPLF for it. EPRDF continued to lead Ethiopia for decades, stability and economic growth being its pros, and a rather lacking democratic system, corruption and restrictions on free press as their cons. EPRDF managed to lead the country for 27 years. After nationwide protests, Abiy, a former intelligence officer, came to power and everyone hoped he would take the nation to a better standing. He got a Nobel Peace Prize for ending the decades-long no-war, no-peace situation with his eyes. Then he formed a new coalition called Prosperity Party, 
which TPLF refused to join, citing that the party had no clear political direction and was not in their best interest. TPLF was then limited to a regional party. COVID-19 came. Abby decided to postpone the elections. TPLF accused him of using COVID-19 as an opportunity to rig the elections. A famous musician, also political icon, Hachalo Handessa was killed in Addis Ababa. Opposition political leaders were jailed in association and things with TPLF were escalating. TPLF held their own election within the constitutional timeframe. Abby warned the TPLF that if they went on with the elections, mothers will cry, the youth will die and houses will be destroyed. Abby and all government media outlets have been working on anti tigray narratives ever since he came to power. Abby repeatedly used the term daytime hyenas to refer to Tigrayan elites. It served to shame and profile Tigrayans in Ethiopia. While everyone commits crimes in Ethiopia, whenever a Tigrayan is a suspect, their Tigrayan sounding names and their language is given emphasis on media. Tigrayan speakers. This is unseen before in Ethiopia. Finally, after massing up of the Ethiopian and Amhara army around Tigray for weeks, military show-offs by both sides and warnings from Tigray leader Dr. Deborah Tsion Gebra Mikhail to stand down, Abiy launched a military operation on Tigray, claiming that its Northern Command military base was attacked. He called it a law enforcement operation. Unable to continue with conventional warfare, especially due to the use of precision strike drones and a complete humanitarian siege, Tigrayan forces decided to retreat to the mountains and utilize guerrilla tactic, a TPLF specialty. An overwhelming scale and degree of horrible atrocities have been verified and documented by independent international human rights and media organizations. To breaking news now, foreign ministers from the G7 group of nations have strongly condemned mass civilian killings in Ethiopia's Tigray region. Disturbing videos which appear to show the killing of unarmed civilians in northern Ethiopia by people apparently dressed in Ethiopian army uniform. Power and communication blackout, deliberate destruction of crops and livestock in rural areas, use of chemical weapons in battlefields and civilian communities, physical attacks, mass detentions, deliberate burning of homes, namely 500 houses burnt around the town Gidget indiscriminate shelling and airstrikes of civilian populated areas, including on busy market days. The Togoga airstrike by the Ethiopian Air Force on the town of Togoga in the Tigray region of Ethiopia on a market day on 22nd of June, 2021. And this just into CNN, Ethiopia's military is now admitting it carried out an airstrike in the war-torn Tigray region Tuesday after initially denying that such an attack occurred. Witnesses say a market was hit. 64 civilians were killed and 184 were injured. The Aksum Massacre was carried out by the Eritrean forces in the ancient and the holiest city of Tigray, which is often called the Second Jerusalem, on November 28, 2020, which resulted in about 345 to 800 civilian casualties. The Mariam Dengalet massacre took place on 30th of November 2020. The EDF killed between 80 and 150 civilians in the compound of Mariam Dengalet church. Among the dead, at least 20 of them were children. I saw them from Appa. They were all killed. They start pushing people out of their houses. They were killing all children, women and old men. The voices you can hear are describing a massacre in a small village in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. Alex 
These are the names and pictures of some of the dead, voiced by a man desperate to memorialize those lost on a holy day in November. Marbara Adego, a historical town in Tigray, which is located 12.5 kilometers south of the city of Axum. The Ethiopian army took away 73 men from the town and surrounding area. None of them had been heard of since they took them. But videos later emerged showing the ENDF laughing while killing and throwing 43 men off a cliff. By pinpointing the location, CNN was able to speak to local villagers who confirmed their family members were dragged away by Ethiopian soldiers and have not been seen since. Some believe their loved ones are in this video. You can hear soldiers asking the whistleblower to come closer. The wording here is important. Execution. This is premeditated. They've rounded up these men to kill them. We must warn you, what you're about to see is horrifying. <laughs> Shoot them in the head, he says. And they do. Look at the left of your screen. The man shoots. We pause the video just before his victim falls to the ground. And again, another soldier raises his weapon towards the man in the white scarf. The video cuts out, but the next scene tells you what happened to him, to all of them. The soldiers continue to shoot, making sure that there are no survivors. What you are witnessing is an extrajudicial execution. We counted at least 34 young men at the beginning of this video. All are now presumed their bodies casually flung over the ridge. No attempt to hide what has been done here. No apparent fear of consequences. Their actions are so appalling, we can only show individual frames from the video. But it doesn't stop here. You can hear someone saying, check that one. That one is not dead. Kill him or I will come. The same soldier moves further along the ridge and shoots from close range as other soldiers watch on. My Kadra, a place in northwestern Tigray. At least 700 to 1,100 people were killed by combined forces of the ENDF, Amhara troops, Amhara militia, and Fano vigilante group. A 40 year old mother who survived the massacre and fled to Sudan told Reuters when they entered, the Amhara and the Fano said, Tigrayans shall not remain here. The Fano said, they'll keep no boy or man alive. They'll cut off their heads. Dead bodies with hands tied, bullet holes and machete wounds all over still emerge in the shores of the Takaza River. The Sudanese fishermen take them out and bury them. These forces also mass looted public and private properties, including hospitals and schools. The violence badly damaged health facilities, with barely one in 10 functioning. Doctors Without Borders has condemned the deliberate and widespread attacks on healthcare facilities in Ethiopia's rest of Tigray region. A 106 health facilities visited by MSF teams between mid-December 2020 and early March 2021. Nearly 70% had been looted and more than 30% had been damaged. Just 13% were functioning normally. According to the interim government of Tigray, before the war, 269 ambulances were operating at 40 health centres and hospitals in Tigray. Currently, there are only 31 ambulances in four hospitals. Before fighting broke out in late 2020, the Tigray region in northern Ethiopia was home to around 5.5 million people, according to UN estimates. Now, 2.2 million people internally displaced 
and at least 4.5 million people need emergency aid and over 100,000 children in Tigray are at risk of death from malnutrition. And an iconic signature act of Eritrean Ethiopian Amhara forces, a genocidal package dedicated just for women, using rape as a weapon of war. Gang rapes in which Eritrean and Ethiopian troops make lines and take turns in raping women for days. Girls as young as four and grandmothers as old as 89 are victims. The stories heard on international media are horrific to even hear. I was trying to get food home for my children when the soldiers pulled me off the minibus, the 27-year-old mother told the journalist. The mother said that's when her 11 days of brutal abuse began. The soldiers took me to the deserts and there were 23 of them there. Then every single one of them raped me, one after the other. They suffocated me when I screamed. They beat me for days. And finally, if the rape wasn't enough, they tied me and shoved items like nails, stones and cotton inside my vagina. The top public health official, Dr. Fasika Haile Selassie, told the journalist, he thinks, what we have seen is the tip of the iceberg since most of the people live in rural areas and have little to no access to be admitted to hospital. People are living in the rural area. And so I would assume that the number that we have seen is the tip of the iceberg. The 27-year-old mother said she has spent a month in the hospital receiving treatment. She suffered from a broken leg and back and can't stand, walk, even can't control her urine. She said there is a mix of urine and blood coming out of her. She finally said the enemy destroyed her life. A nurse from Adigrat Hospital told Sky News, there is a victim here who was already pregnant when three Eritrean soldiers and two Ethiopian soldiers raped her. She can't even move her legs and control her urine now. Imagine being pregnant and you can't even control your bladder, said the nurse while sobbing, imagining what the women in Tigray went through since the fighting began. <laughs> A 31-year-old woman said the soldiers found her fleeing to the desert, fearing for her life when her hometown was in active fighting. She said, They found us fleeing. They killed some people who were fleeing with us, and five soldiers tied my hands and they raped me for three days straight. She said she crawled her way out of the desert because she couldn't walk anymore. She also said she was eating leaves because that was all she could find in the desert. Another victim in Adigrat Hospital told the journalist she was raped along with her 89-year-old grandmother. It was an active punishment, she said, by soldiers who thought her husband was an opposition TDF fighter. The soldier took my child from me. I begged him and told him to do whatever he wanted with me and leave my child out of this. After I begged him crying for long, he raped me and left. And then they raped my 89-year-old grandmother after they beat her and dragged her by her feet. Even the regional capital Makala wasn't safe. Women of Makala describe how their lives turned upside down in just less than a month. A victim tells her story to a nurse. She said, My friend and I were going home to wash some clothes and dishes. Suddenly the soldiers came our way. My friend saw them first and when she tried to run, they shot her. She died immediately. I thought she stumbled and fell, and when I went back to check on her, one soldier came and slapped me. Then they raped me and left. Here is another victim, also in Makala. A 19-year-old girl who works as a waitress was stopped by soldiers on her way home. She told the journalist the soldier took her to a house near the hill of Masobo and raped her for four days in a row. One day, the soldier went out to wash his feet without closing the door. When I tried to escape, he caught me and hit me in the abdomen with a gun. He then called his friend when he noticed I was bleeding to tell him to take me and throw me elsewhere. 
Another rape victim in the capital of Tigray said Eritrean troops who were wearing Ethiopian military uniforms came to their coffee house. There were 30 of them and only six women in the house. They told us to undress ourselves and lay on the ground and they gang raped us. Five soldiers for each one of us. They were even laughing and taking pictures while they rape us. One was a virgin. I still don't know where they took her. They took all of us to the forest and injected everyone with something I didn't know, including me and my son. They took our clothes and tied us to a rock and tree for 10 days. I still don't feel my hands to this day. Many dead bodies can be seen in the forest. There were so many corpses that even the vultures were full and they were just walking on the corpses. Three days later, a pregnant woman died giving birth to a baby. And I saw them break the baby's face with a bullet when he cried. Then one of the soldiers came our way and pointed a gun on my child. Even though I was begging him, he shot him. He killed my 12 year old boy in front of me. Sorry, sorry. 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 A doctor who fled to Sudan shared a story with Nima, a CNN journalist that one of his patients, while getting raped repeatedly by Ethiopian soldiers and Amhara militias, she was told that her blood was being purified and that she was being Amharanized. The doctor said that when she was raped repeatedly by Ethiopian soldiers, she says she was told that her blood was being purified, that she was being Amharized. The Amhara, of course, another ethnic group involved in that conflict in Ethiopia. Nima, when explaining what she saw at Aksum Referral Hospital, this girl is so scared, she's covering her face, but she wants to tell us what happened, which is that a grenade detonated in front of a group of soldiers, and she says they started randomly opening fire on civilians. She is clearly not a soldier. She's a teenage girl, and she says that she was shot through the leg. Soldiers walk in and out of the hospital with impunity. One soldier spot the camera and runs off immediately. She also said she and her team noticed a line of soldiers encircling the hospital as they leave Axum. This is just the tip of the iceberg. One reporter describes her experience in Tigray this way. This war may be hell for all, but for women, it's much, much worse than that. I do want you to take us through some of these uh, extremely powerful images uh, that, that you shot. But in the lead to your Nat Geo piece, um, it says, I never saw hell before, but now I have. W what was it like? Just, just, just paint a picture for us. Well, one thing that I saw and witnessed, um, you know, with many of the women I spoke to is the fact that rape is pretty rampant. And there are, you know, hundreds of women who are being raped as a weapon of war. Uh, this particular woman, Shawit, her children were made to watch. Uh, she was gang raped repeatedly. Uh, she's HIV positive. She said to the soldiers, please, I'm sick. I'm HIV positive. She actually showed them her medication and, you know, at least use protection. And they did not. They just ignored her. And... When asked of his comments on the atrocities on women, Pam Abbey basically justified it all. And as per his promise, mothers cried, the youth died and houses were destroyed. And in the midst of hell, 
the youth of Tigray, who were not ready for war of this scale, began to flow to the mountains of Tigray. Along with them, Tigrayan opposition party members, critics, politicians and generals who were at odds with the TPLF itself, retired military officers and beyond, joined forces with the government of Tigray. The ruling party, the TPLF, who was regrouping in the mountains of central and southern Tigray. Encircled in every direction, cut off from any logistical supply, under fire every day, they managed to train the youth in a rather quick and desperate manner. This new army of liberators, the Avengers of Tigray, they call themselves, the TDF, Tigray Defence Forces. We bow to nobody but God. But God. Wow. I I Ooh, that kill ya. Back from the dirt just to bury ya. You can look it up on the media. Y'all not the sound full of pity ya. Who that kill ya? Huh? I ain't by black eye. Put them on the chop till the top out. Everybody go on. Who that kill ya? Who that kill ya? TDF are engineers, journalists who used to work for medias like BBC, award-winning movie stars, musicians, doctors, professors, writers, students, business owners and entrepreneurs, and most importantly, the Waros. <laughs> During the 17-year war against the former communist leader, Colonel Mungustu, women were a significant part of the fighting forces, leadership, nurses and doctors and more. On top of that, it was up to the mothers of Tigray to feed the whole armies. Mata, a brave fighter who sacrificed her life to save her squadron. Keshi Gebru, a fearless woman who told the enemies how she believes in the cause and doesn't regret fighting them, while being a captive of war and so many more. One of them is Fetlawerk Gebra Xavier, better known as Mongerino. She's now the Vice President of Tigray, second in command to Dr. Debrutzion Gebra Mikhail. One of her friends, Alam, also a former soldier of TPLF and wife of the top military leader of their army, Hyalong, lost her life in combat in the war taking place right now. She left her stable life in the US to join her former partners. These are the senior Wairos. Their daughters are making yet another history. The TDF women are now fighting for a more noble cause. That is to stop sexual atrocities and to avenge their sisters who were brutally raped and some to avenge themselves. Some of these women abandoned their comfortable and cozy lives and stormed to the mountains of Tigray, like this journalist, Saron. Here's some of their reasons to join the TDF from themselves. <laughs> Father and daughter fighting side by side in battle is a rare story you'll see anywhere in the world. How about a newlywed bride and groom? And a woman along with her brothers. If you closely analyze each case, you'll find such amusing stories everywhere. Because this war, for most of these women, is not about politics or power. It is about female dignity and respect. 
These women are an example of determination and self-reliance. Because the world has expressed its concern over weaponized rape in Tigray repeatedly, that didn't stop the Eritrean, Amhara and Ethiopian troops from doing what they were there to do. Undeniably, what stopped the violence was TDF and the brave women in it. In the past weeks, the TDF launched major offensives in the name of a well-known Tigrayan military general, Ras Alula, around Tembien, and another wide-scale operation in southern Tigray, named in the Mothers of Tigray. All were victorious in liberating most of Tigray, capturing thousands of soldiers and weapons. But most importantly, stopping the killings and rapes. They were killing, they were killing innocent people. They were killing innocent people. They were raping our girls. They were kids, they were raping our girls. And we have, we are breathing now a freedom. Crowds went out to cheer the TDF. Most importantly, the mothers of Tigray finally had some relief. <laughs> Abby did not accept his military losses. His generals denied their military defeat and even went so far as to declare videos of Ethiopian prisoners of war as photoshopped. But it was clear to the world that the balance was shifting to the TDF. Many analysts agree that the Ethiopian Defence Forces were effectively dismantled. Abiy declared a unilateral ceasefire while making sure Tigray is isolated, encircled and under siege. This is causing delay in much needed humanitarian aid. With most of Western Tigray under Amhara militia control, killing and rape are still heard of in towns like Homara and Mankadra. Neighbouring Eritrean army, primary contractors of Abiy's genocidal campaign, are reportedly re-entering Tigray. Ethnic Tigrayans are being mass arrested all over Ethiopia, including Addis Ababa. Most importantly, people are dying every day due to hunger a painful and long way to go. TDF are working to open humanitarian corridors for their people. More and more are joining them. The next generation Wairos wish peace for Tigray and its people. Thank you for staying with us. You are now part of the story. Your action now can shorten the pain and suffering of many. You can wipe the tears of these mothers and girls. Your awareness is the most important factor. Please share the stories with every human being. Call your MPs and representatives and let them know what is going on in Tigray. Want to do something more about it? You can donate and help the brave women of Tigray and their loved ones get back to normalcy by using this QR code or by visiting tdana.org and using the GoFundMe set up for you. To follow the stories of the brave Wairos and to know what's happening in Tigray right now, you can follow hashtag Tigray on social media platforms. And for more, we recommend you visit Omna Tigray as well. You can also buy our Wairo merchandise and promote and embrace the bravery of Tigray women and become a Wairo yourself. <laughs> I 
Hey everyone. I would just like to oh. clarify. It <laughs> didn't stop. Hey everyone. Um, thank you for everyone who stayed around to watch Meet the Wattles. Um, it was put together with, with myself and some friends just to help spread the word. So please, this link or the one that I've shared a lot of times throughout social media, um, Man Manawi Media, please share it around and send it to, I know it's not perfect. I know sometimes my voice went in and out. It's the first time we've tried doing something like this and my first time recording a big long clip. Um, but please send it out to your professors if you go to university. You know, professors have a really important role to play in society. When they start getting on a cause, they get, bring their students in. Um, that brings politicians in. So send it to them if if you can. Send it to your classmates at university. Send it to – ask your children if there's – you know, there's parents here – um, send it to their children, like ask your children to send it to their friends and stuff at universities. Send it to the politicians, send it to the media. I know a lot of media have already covered it. Um, but yeah, like I say, I know it's not 100% perfect with my, my tone and some, sometimes some things are cut out, but I think we've covered the, the message as much as possible, um, the history and the lead up and things that many Westerners don't understand about Tigray many things that um, they don't understand the politics, the TPLF struggle. There's a lot of prop like anti-TPLF propaganda out there. So this is not me saying we support them. It gives you a balanced overview of what's happened um, of in the past and what's happening now. So please, I would love you guys to share this out. Um, thank you very much for staying around. Uh, must be early for you guys in America and you in um, Europe it's in the afternoon so I just wanted to share it live stream it live with you so that you know that it's me who put it together and I have done this out of the bottom of my heart taken my time out to try and make the message clear so please I would really like I don't ever ask you guys to share things because I don't like doing it but I would really appreciate if this one gets shared out and passed on so that the French, <laughs> the Westerners, are able to actually understand the whole story from the whole perspective, from the start to all rights happening now, because it's very hard to ke keep an eye and keep track on what's been happening if you haven't been following it. So that's why we tried to do it all, um, covering everything off so that they know and they're aware and they know what they're coming in and talking about and that this isn't the first time it's happened and who the people of Tigray are. They don't know this stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, enjoy your evening or day or morning or wherever you are and I'll see you guys later. Bye.